wanted to make a video about this book because I just finished reading it like less than half an hour ago and I'm just like so fulfilled feeling right now. Um, so this is going to be kind of like a review slash um, just talking about it. Um, I'm going to try to not like intensely spoil things but at the same time there's probably going to be some spoilers. I'm not going to give like specifics but I might hint at like certain things that happen so if you don't want to know then probably don't watch this video but um but yeah um overall I just want to start off by saying like I have been so pumped to have this book ever since like we first heard about it being a thing like back in 2017 I think when there was first talk about it and like, so excited to like have a book where um it was going to be so heavily based on Sylvanas. Uh, when it finally did come out, like the first day it came out, I went to the bookstore and of course like had to go look at it and everything and I didn't buy it right then and the reason why is because my brother works at a bookstore but he lives like a few hours away and I was like oh he could, get, he could like get me a discount on it. Um, he did buy it for me but because he lives far away I had to like wait a while to get it because my parents went to visit him just last weekend and they were able to finally bring it home so I got it like a month after it came out otherwise I totally would have finished reading it sooner I was just waiting to get my hands on it um, and for me reading is something where like I'm not really a huge reader like I haven't read a lot of books at all in my life like I've read like the Narnia series a few times when I was younger I tried to read The Hobbit I like barely got to like chapter two or something um, I've read like books that we've been assigned to read in high school a few Nicholas Sparks books because romantic novels or whatever um, when I was like 13 and listening to Taylor Swift that was a thing but other than that the only books that I have been able to make myself read is World of Warcraft books um, I have a huge collection of Warcraft books I think I have at least 20 of them I've probably read half um, but yeah Warcraft books are just so like intriguing for me um, I think because I always have a hard time like following storylines it makes it easier to follow along with Warcraft because I can like picture like the places they're talking about and the characters that are talk that they're talking about so it gives me like a better visual and makes it like enjoyable to read so so that's where I stand on books and like Warcraft and everything so with that being said I just basically want to come out and say that this book is the best book I've ever read in my life like based on my personal experience with books having not read a whole, whole lot so like I am slightly biased but um, out of all the workout books I read, this one, like for me personally, was just amazing. I just really, really love the storyline and being able to um, see things like from Sylvanas's like point of view um, was just incredible. And just hearing so much about the Forsaken, there's no point where I like was bored with like a chapter or anything. Like even when I first started reading it, I was like only really looking forward to the parts that would be like about Sylvanas. Um, and when you're reading through, like the chapters will say like what location. So it'll be like, oh, chapter 7, Stormwind City, or like chapter 17, Undercity, all that kind of stuff. And like when I first started reading, I was like, can we just get to the Undercity parts, please and thank you? But I honestly enjoyed all of it. Uh, one of my like first like favorite parts that really stood out in the book was when they were talking about um, just after the war with the Burning Leaf had concluded and um, Sylvanas as the new war chief and all the other horde leaders were basically parading through all of Ogrimmar through all the different valleys and like meeting up with like all the other leaders like she went through and like met with Bane and then met with Gallywix and then they headed back and then they had their feast where Gallywix talked about um, the Azerite and everything like that and then things really got into motion with Azerite basically like the first couple chapters were about like the Horde and the Alliance on um, their perspectives of having Azerite introduced to them which is like an in-game cutscene thing so that was really really cool reading it because it was like I can leg legitimately like picture what's happening because this is something that we literally got to see so that was really awesome especially at, right at the start of the book to have like that much like visuals was super duper awesome but yeah pretty much like throughout the whole book there was just like every single location that they talked about was a perfectly painted picture or like stuff that I could literally just go to in game and there was actually so many times where I'd be reading this book and it, I would just feel like nostalgia or something almost and I would have to stop reading and log on to WoW and like go to that spot and be like this this is what I'm reading like it was so cool to just like go from reading the book to like physically looking at it in game and be like whoa this is like the platform for what I'm looking at right now I don't know I just feel like this book compared to other Warcraft books was like the most like 
realistically on point with like what's actually in game like I feel like they reference so many specific places in this book more than any that I've ever really noticed I don't know it was just really really cool or even like talking about like the sword and so with this and everything with all the goblins it's like you can literally go there and see that and that's what's happening in the book so that was really awesome the book really started to get interesting I think about like halfway when Andrew and went to the netherlight temple which is like basically your class order hall for priests which I have not seen yet because I don't have a level 100 priest or anything but I really want to make one now to like see it I know that I could just like look it up on YouTube but I'd want to like experience it myself and everything but when he went there he got to see like just members of the horde and alliance just like coexisting and there was like no like problems and specifically like forsaken he was able to see like talking to like just a human and it was like no big deal and then it kind of sparked something in his mind like if this is something that's happening here maybe we can take this to a larger scale and try to reunite um the forsaken with their living family that's still like in stormwind and everything so basically and this is like a summed up version he got into contact with sylvanas and was like hey like i think that this would benefit both the horde and the alliance like do you have any people in the undercity who have living family who would like to meet them and like we can try to arrange it and see like if on both sides if we can arrange for these people to come together and like meet and everything which was like a big like leap of faith I feel like it's like oh my god because obviously like most humans would be like um very fearful and like disgusted by the forsaken and everything so that was like pretty much from like the halfway point to the end of the book was like the main plot that was going on was like okay like they're gonna be meeting and this is like a really big deal and it's like can we trust each leader like Anduin's kind of like, I don't know, is Sylvanas going to attack us if we try to arrange this meeting? And Sylvanas is also like, is Anduin going to hurt my Forsaken? Like, I don't know, I'm trying to just kind of sum it up, like, as quickly as I can for, like, the whole half of the book and everything. But when, when it came to, like, the actual day where, like, the meeting was going to go down, it was just, it was, like, the last couple chapters or something. And it was so, like, fun to read and, like, just, like, so easy and went by so quickly and everything because I just, like, couldn't stop turning the pages. I was like, this is so good. Um, and they met, like, in Arathi Highlands and the Forsaken, um, they kind of lined up and, like, got ready to meet, um, from Thoradin's Wall and the Alliance was at Stormguard Keep and they would basically, like, arrange to both kind of march up together and meet in the field and then they could exchange, like, meeting with each other and everything and... Um, basically, things were going really well to start with. There were some humans who, like, when they got closer to approaching their undead family members, kind of backed down and were like, no, like, I don't want to do this. Um, but the ones who did meet, it went really, really well. And then basically, things went really, really wrong all of a sudden, um, when I don't want to, like, say specifically what it is. I know I'm spoiling anyways, but I don't want to, like, specifically say what happened, because for me, this part, like, when I read, like, this thing that happened I was like oh god like shit is about to go down and so yeah this thing happened where someone important was was there and was revealed and basically basically stuff went really bad and Sylvanas was forced to attack but she did not attack the alliance like she didn't attack any humans she actually um, basically slaughtered her, all of her own people, not like everyone because not everyone was there, it was just like a select group of Forsaken, but every Forsaken person that was there, so I think it was like 20 people, um, people that were there, she was forced to kill them and basically that literally broke my heart because, um, like those are Sylvanas' people and I was like, oh my god, like, that's... The last thing that Sylvanas would want to do is to harm her people, but she had good reason in her mind to do it because they were basically traitors. So I kind of was like, I can accept that, like if that's what she feels is right, but at the same time it was just really like heartbreaking for me. Like I literally felt like I was gonna cry when it was happening. Like I couldn't believe what I was reading, um, but I understand at the same time. and. Yeah, so basically why the stuff went down, there was just an important person who I don't really want to, like, reveal because I feel like that was, like, the turning point what made that happen and, like, if you're gonna read it, I'd like you to find that out for yourself, if that makes any sense. I don't even know. Basically how the book comes to an ending, like, literally the last couple, like, sentences just really kind of rattled me a bit and had me feeling a little bit, like, empty and, like, when I finished reading it, I was just kind of, like, just staring and not really sure like how to feel because it's just kind of upsetting 
Um, because this is like an official World of Warcraft book, so it's like if this is said in the book, it's probably likely going to be a really big like factor that they're going to follow and base Battle for Azeroth on. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of like quote what was said by Anduin. And so Anduin says, People can change, but some people will never, never desire to do so. Sylvanas Windrunner is one of those. I feel like that's something we already know, but it's just like, again, like I was saying, just like having that in a, an official book written in front of me is just like, oh, goddamn. <laughs> um, and then the very, very last thing in the book, like literally the last line, is Anduin saying, I believe that Sylvanas Windrunner is well and truly lost. And again, it's just kind of like, okay. That's great. My my queen is just gonna basically go to shit in this expansion is how I feel like. You know how to feel about it. I feel like I need to make an entirely separate video just kind of talking about my current thoughts and emotions towards Sylvanas right now because I do adore her and serve her and view her entirely as my queen. There are some like differing thoughts that I have towards it and I just kind of want to like express that more um because i'm not one to just be over here and be like oh everything sylvanas is doing is fine like she's not doing anything wrong like you're all crazy for thinking that she's evil i'm not really like i'm not that kind of fan of sylvanas like i have like pretty good morals and everything but for me it's like loyalty is a huge thing towards sylvanas so yeah i'm probably i'm gonna make a separate video talking about my exact thoughts on that but this was just kind of my, my overall thoughts on the book and everything um i've never really reviewed a book or anything of the sorts i have no idea if this was even done correctly in any way one other thing i would like to say though is the story in the in this book about the goblin and the gnome um was just adorable and everything so i would highly suggest reading this book not only for every other reason that i just said but also just because that is just such like a comical relief kind of thing in the book and I just I loved reading every chapter with them in it so so yeah um I really have nothing else to say and I'm kind of rambly and awkward right now so I'm just gonna go and hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again very very soon bye guys